The creator of God of War said this. David Jaffe isn't happy with the direction Kratos has taken. In a recent video on his YouTube channel, Jaffe claims that while he liked the first God of War reboot, he thinks Kratos has grown too soft, and that it's a result of developers injecting their personal lives into the series, and the audience does not want that. The reaction to Jaffe's comments have been less than stellar, with even 2018 God of War director Cory Barlog weighing in. How do you feel about modern Kratos? Too soft? Now before I even continue and totally dismantle this man's way of thinking on his character that he created, it's his, it's his baby. I will, I will admit that, it's his baby. I must give him respect, right? I have to give him respect. He made one of the goats. Kratos is a goat. God of War series is a goaded series. It is what it is. Since the PS2, the PSP, the PS3, PS4, now the PS5, that series is golden. Cool, great. Now, after we pay respect to a man who created a legend, I have to now destroy the man who doesn't understand the legend he wrote. Kratos is not soft. Kratos is anything but soft. In fact, Kratos is a veteran. I'm going to repeat that one more time. Kratos is a veteran. You should know you put him through all the shit he went through to get to this point. And Santa Monica Studios took what you left behind and took the next logical step. When the war is over, what do men do? When the war is over, what do soldiers do? They come home and try their best some unsuccessfully, but they try their best to live a normal life, to live a life away from that, to have people never go through what they went through. Kratos doesn't want Atreus anywhere near conflict, and yet it follows him so. It haunts him. It haunts him like Athena herself constantly watching and waiting to ruin his life so he's hard he's ready he knows that at a moment notice genuinely just a moment notice he has to defend his family and he's constantly under that sure he wants to relax he does he lives in a quiet little shed in the woods secluded away from people this man is not soft this man has been anything but soft since you created him. All he's known is rage and revenge. In fact, if you wanted him to be that avatar, complete and utter destruction, the hardcore of the hardcore, right? He would have been just another Doom guy. Because Doom guy has been fighting demons and mercilessly murking them, justifiably so, for eons at this point. Dungai isn't a character. Dungai is an idea. Dungai is an avatar. Dungai is a force of nature. Kratos isn't that. But like, let's go back. Let's let's do a quick, and I mean this, history on Kratos. Maybe some of you don't know where he came from. Maybe some of you don't know why this was the next logical step. Maybe some of you have never had veterans in your life who come home and they're just trying to do their best with whatever PTSD or scars that they have from war. Right? Maybe some of you just don't have that. And I understand that. If you don't see it and you never experience, you won't know what to look for or how this affects game making. But let's say, okay, cool. Let's start from the beginning of old Kratos' timeline. Ready? And Kratos, born from Sparta, the son of Sparta, also known as the ghost of Sparta, had to murk his baby and his wife because the god of war, Ares, thought it would be funny. All right, mate, he didn't think it would be funny, but you know, basically saying, I want you to be the best warrior ever. And turns out that did make turn him into the best warrior ever. So much so that he killed Ares and he became the new god of war. All right, fine. Um, damn. Isn't that tragic? But there's more. In God of War 2, he was betrayed by the gods because they thought he had too much power and he wasn't godly enough for them. So they took away all his powers. So Kratos swore vengeance on the gods because he got screwed over by one god, you know, Ares. And now he got screwed over by the pantheon of gods. 
everybody but Athena, but you know, she kind of had her own mess and she's still a mess. So he got killed by the God, went to the Sisters of Fate, marked them to find out what they need to do, and teamed up with the Titans along the way. The Titans have beef with the gods. We already know this, you know, they were overthrown by the Olympian gods. So Kratos obviously saying, an enemy of my enemy is my friend. Not really, because he also killed a Titan, or he's Gaia. So that means, like, I need to get the job done. Look at this. Look what Zeus has to go through. And Zeus is still not dead at this point. God lord. So either way, God of War 3 comes along and the ending is wild. Kratos literally induces the apocalypse. Look, look at this. He kills Poseidon. All right, now that's, that's a pretty brutal stuff. Back. And then as soon as he drops in the ocean, So apparently killing the primer gods have a certain effect on the world. And if you want to know what happens when you kill all the gods, well, this. Absolute Armageddon. Everything is gone. There is no land or at least no place you can live on. Every animal that lived, every human that lived, every insect that lived is basically dead, if not confirmed dead. And let's not forget, he also killed Hades. So I don't know what's happening in the underworld, but I'm pretty sure it ain't okay. It ain't okay. There's some kind of mayhem going on there that we just don't know or will ever know. Now, if you wanted God of War to be this kind of series, by all means, you wouldn't have made God of War 3 one of the most emotional games there is. Because by the ending, when Pandora comes in the picture and he's seeing this girl do her best and he doesn't want to let her go, he doesn't want to let her die, he genuinely tries to stop her, partly because the girl, you know, Pandora, looks like his daughter, but even then, everything dies, the world ends, yada yada. So, we don't know how much time, right? and this is the important thing that happens after someone comes back from war or after someone wins a battle, something like that, right? We don't know how long was it between that moment on top of the peak of Olympus after he killed Hades, but we don't know how long was it from that moment to when we next see him chopping wood. You know what happens when men come back from war and they have time to themselves, finally time that they don't have to deal with the flight or fight instinct when they can just breathe? Do you know what happens? Men reflect on what they've done. Men think of the actions they took. Men now have a time to second guess what they've done and how they did it. I have seen too many war stories. I know too many people who've been affected like this. I work in mental health, so this is kind of a, a natural topic. I deal with veterans. And I'm going to tell you right now, Kratos living the way he lives is the exact ideal way some of these men want to go. Some of these men dream that their life will go like. Because they can't comprehend how to be emotionally available for someone when they no longer have that part of them inside them. There is an old saying that war takes everything. It takes the innocent. It takes the guilty. It takes the, the farmer, the doctor. It takes the mother, the child, the old and frail. It takes everything alike. And Kratos, being the god of war, took it all. He took everything from everyone and then left them with nothing. He can never go back to Sparta. He can never go back to his homeland. He can even go and pay respect to his wife and kids grave if he ever made one or ever got a chance to make one. So you saying Kratos is soft undermines everything he's ever been through. You, the creator, his father, his progenitor, whatever they want to call it, says he is soft. Means that you no longer saw anything you put this man through as a valid reason for him to be hard as he is. A man doesn't even want to open up to his child, and that's soft to you. A man wants to connect with his child after the things he's been through and experienced in life, wants to teach his child right from wrong, and that's soft to you. 
damn, that's like the most manliest thing I can see. If I have a father like that, which I do, bless me. Bless my stepdad. I fucking love him. Maybe you saying Kratos is soft tells me that you haven't gone through any legit tremendous turmoil in your life where you fundamentally have to change the way you deal with the world, right? You no longer have that innocent, that shine in your eye. You no longer ever put your back on a door or on a window, always to the wall looking for an exit. Maybe you never went through that. But Kratos, his story, the things he's been through, This is a natural evolution once war is over. Shoot, you saw how much he didn't want to go to war because he knows how it affects everything. Imagine Ragnarok happened and all the realms, and I mean this, all the realms, all the people, all the gods, all the animals, all the innocent creatures died again by his hand. By him taking action. Imagine if Ragnarok ended that way and Kratos was left at the world tree holding Atreus' corpse and just losing it again. What would you, what, what do you want? Or do you just want another Doom Guy? A vessel for destruction. I don't know. Maybe I'm tweaking. Maybe I see myself too much in him. Maybe I see the veterans I deal with in Kratos. Maybe that's the problem. Maybe I've seen it or it's too real for me. Maybe I've seen his legit real world counterpart suffering somewhere in silence. I'm sorry. I didn't want this to get that deep. Maybe I overstep a boundaries. But this has been definitely not about. Maybe, I don't know. I'm just going to end the video right here. Right here. Right here. I, I'm, just, I'm just rambling at this point. If you like the video, give him a thumbs up. If you like the video, give him a thumbs down. If you want to come a subscriber, please and thank you. I'll be grateful. But make sure that whatever you do, you have a good day on purpose. And I'll catch you on the next one. Man, I, I don't think I'm going to put this in the video, but one of my veteran friends, Patience, I guess. He's a buddy now. And I asked him if I can say this. And he said it's okay to share this story because he, he sure many people feel the same way. He told me he's addicted to playing Rainbow Six Siege. He's addicted to winning without a single casualty on his team. He told me that that game lets him get so close to not losing one of his buddies at war. He says that with conviction. I told him that game, Rainbow Six, is a curse. I told him that that Rainbow Six game he needs to let it go. But he can't. He wants to save his buddy. He wants to make the right call. I understand it. Gaming is an escape for some people. Gaming is a way to repair them. And yet, Kratos is soft. 